Hello everyone, this video is on the topic of predation, my own story of my dog Cloud that I wanted to share with you all. Um, the issue is now solved, but uh, I did want to share with you my insights about it because I do think it's very interesting. Now, he looks like a cute little fluffy boy, but uh, my management and prevention plan of keeping the squirrels out of my yard failed. Uh, this spring when uh, the baby squirrels were, were coming out of the ground and um, I thought I had the whole area secured but they found ways to get into the dog area and uh, come in unexpectedly. I do use management and prevention to prevent the squirrels coming into the yard as well as gophers and rats. Okay. As you can see here there's some of the metal that I, I've laid out metal underneath the ground. Epic's going to help me reveal it with, with cloth. And then I put dirt or wood chips over it so that it makes a nice flat surface for the dogs to uh, move on without squirrels and gophers coming up, which is not only great for preventing the squirrels and gophers from getting a surprise of being suddenly in a large quantity of dogs, but also that the dogs don't uh, put their feet into the gopher holes and then uh, or squirrel holes and then break their legs, uh, which can happen uh, or at least uh, injure themselves. So one thing is, is that uh, where I've planted things or where the trees are, that's where the squirrels have come up unexpectedly. And sadly, that is how uh, cloud has killed them. So um, I was really not expecting it. I wish it hadn't happened, but I, I'm, I'm wanting to be honest with you that uh, yeah, he's killed some squirrels. I also put up pest proof fencing to keep the rabbits and squirrels out of my yard. But of course, uh, nature finds a way. So they found ways to, to get in that I hadn't thought of being around trees and things like that. This, uh, this fencing is great also for keeping snakes out. So keeping my dogs safe and uh, giving me peace of mind. So I had not worked on uh, recall proofing with Cloud when he was six months old. And so uh, I wasn't even noticing. I was on my computer outside doing work and suddenly there's this little terrier with a dead squirrel in his mouth. So sadly, um, it took five squirrels for me to realize that, that this wasn't gonna stop, that it wasn't a freak occurrence. Uh, and uh, so uh, as a vegan, uh, I sometimes uh, you know slip into vegetarianism I don't particularly uh, want to use dogs to keep, uh, to keep animals off my property. I have no need for that. I understand that, 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 that in, in the past and in already uh, all over the world, how useful these dogs are uh, to maintain things like uh, food for livestock and prevent it getting spoiled by uh, um, other animals. So, so I understand the function of the behavior and why for thousands of years we, we bred it into dogs, um, but I don't particularly need it here. I did see it in action, actually. Um, the squirrel came out of the bottom of the tree. Cloud happened to be there. He grabbed the squirrel, instantaneously killed it, and then went about his day in the most calm, relaxed manner. Cloud, you're a murderer. Look what you've done. You killed the squirrel on my on my field. Everyone else didn't even notice. And it was so odd to me because I, you know, had been living with sight hounds before and after chasing or seeing prey, they could spend days excited and looking for more. So um, these little guys, terriers, uh, that's what I think is, is, is driving Cloud's instinct uh, to want to kill. Uh, their, their function, what they've been bred for, is 24-7 uh, making sure that there's not uh, little animals in, say, for example, an area where food is stored or crops or, or whatever. And so Bliss, <laughs> Bliss is going to block the view. <laughs> so, so, um, so it would make sense that, that a dog could do their job and then not be stressed by it the whole day if their job was to uh, to function the whole day long and night to, to get to, sadly, to kill things. Um, so it really made sense. 
So there was this interesting quality of, of seeing his calmness after what he did. He had no interest in the squirrel. He, knew, he, he had this instinct to see it, kill it, and then the job, it was of no interest to play or, or do anything with the squirrel. When the issue first started occurring in the spring, um, I was very concerned thinking, oh my goodness, uh, you know, it's so instinctual that uh, if he sees a squirrel and it's, you know, available, he knows that there's no fence in between, I'm not going to be able to call him back. What if he runs across the road and goes after the squirrel because he's gone, you know, into a predation mode? Um, what am I going to do? His recall is going to be ruined. Oh no, uh, I haven't proofed the recall. So because I got the two puppies at the same time, I really just, and they're just happy-go-lucky, easy dogs. I've, I've just been really enjoying them and not doing that much training. Uh, so there are, two, there are two aspects of this story. One, all dogs are different. So um, some dogs are easier than others. And uh, the fact that his predation issue, he killed five squirrels and then suddenly, with just a tiny bit of training, you know, a day or two of calling him away from, from wildlife, um, the issue is gone. I can call him away from prey. Uh, so that can, t that can be personality based. All dogs are different. So if someone says, oh, this technique worked for my dog, you should use it. All dogs are different. You have litter mates. Someone has one litter mate and you have the other, they did this, the problem went away, you have an extreme problem. Uh, no matter what technique, your dog's got a different personality and genetics than the sibling. So that's a really important part of this story. But also, um, the part that I wanted to talk about is that I hadn't done, I hadn't done much proofing of the recall or training. I was just enjoying my puppies. Uh, these cloud and bliss. I've just been enjoying having them around. I, I suffered a lot from uh, a lot. Three of my dogs died within the same year. Um, sadly, Kiko, it was recent, but so I haven't done that much training. I've just been enjoying bliss, bliss, blissy. Come here. I've just been in, enjoying the presence of them uh, in my life. It's been wonderful. I, they're, they're very healing beautiful creatures and uh, <laughs> there's a squirrel at the moment but uh, so the, the the point of this story is that um, I hadn't done any training and suddenly I was getting results and I was like how is this even possible and then I was like ah this is what it is uh, it's the relationship and trust it's like a scientific experiment if I you know I'm a dog trainer, so I always get told, uh, you know, your dogs, it's easy with your dogs because you're training them all the time. But in this case, I wasn't. Well, now the trash has arrived, so you might hear uh, my trash being picked up. But um, in this case, it wasn't. I'd done very little training, uh, but what I had worked on unconsciously, because I use positive reinforcement, I don't use any forms of intimidation. I build trust and confidence and and build my relationship with my dogs through uh, positive interactions all of it was easy to solve the problem because i had that relationship and trust so that you know i always really i would say it um, but the scientific part for me in my brain was the uh, the reinforcement so it was all about uh, training and reinforcement and of course you need a relationship and trust first but to see such results with just the relationship and trust that I'd built in my dogs. So instead of working on a recall uh, with these guys, what I had been doing was just simply every time they went out to the bathroom and came back in, I'd give them a treat. So everyone would go out, they'd be milling around, then I'd need to call them back in. So I'd call them back in and give them a treat. That's really the only training that I did. And then I just added on that. So. Um, really having a dog that trusts you, wants to be with you, and you've really built that caring, trusting relationship with them, that's really going to help your training. So that's really uh, the moral of the story for, for this video. And um, I actually do have footage of the, of the moment 
that uh, a rabbit got into my property and I was in shock because I didn't think you could call a dog off in the middle of trying to kill an animal. So I'd seen him kill five squirrels and then I just tried a recall I'd never even proofed and he came back. He didn't want the food, but he came back anyway uh, because of relationship and trust. Cloud! Cloud! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! So it's a really, really powerful thing that you can build with your dog and it takes time. The same with people. Uh, there was a time where our trust was broken and, and I was very worried. Uh, I, I had taken him to have his rabies shot. He'd been great at the vet before and something happened. I, I wasn't allowed to go in to get the, to get the rabies shot uh, and COVID. Uh, but they said that the, the first shot went well and the rabies, he, 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 he didn't do well. I didn't even ask. I didn't want to know because that was in the past. But uh, a few days later, I went to pick him up. And as I picked him up, he got very scared. And most likely it could be the pain in his body from the shot or remembering being grabbed or restrained. And so I saw him be scared of me for the first time. And it took a few months. He even didn't want to train with me because at the time that I was picking him up, I had the treat bags. I was working on taking a picture, a group picture of the dogs. So anytime I tried to group the dogs together, he would look at me and get scared and want to go away. And it broke my heart. So I worked on that. And I think that is the one key to why I gained his trust again. Uh, and, 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 and now he wants to listen to me uh, and finds it reinforcing. Besides doing a little bit of proofing uh, with calling him away from seeing squirrels while on leash or behind a fence, um, this one incident of when our trust was broken and really my focus uh, on building it back, uh, you know, in, in small steps really helped with uh, gaining his trust again, gaining his confidence in me and his interest in wanting to be with me. So. So that's the moral of the story. I hope you guys found it interesting. I do have a, a video on demand on called Harnessing the Hunter that goes over working with dogs that, uh, that have issues with being either over aroused or excited about prey and getting them to calm down so they can, so they can function uh, around prey and listen to you. So for safety and also to prevent them killing animals. Uh, so, you know, some people want to hunt and use their dogs for hunting. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't, that that's your own thing. You can do that. But this type of training would be beneficial where you could ask your dog to do it and then also tell them when it's not appropriate. Say, for example, like the neighbor's cat or, or something like that. So with Cloud, the training that I did was interrupt it when it was happening by using a recall. Uh, and then also teaching him a default leave it. So when you see prey, it's not for eating. <laughs> it's not for killing. It's just for looking. <laughs> so they can be loose. They can see prey, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not something that they need to run and grab and kill. The other thing I worked on with him is playing tug and fetch. So he got to have uh, a fun time. And one of his favorite things is uh, the, I don't know why I did that, but, but like turning on a hose with a, one of those guns so that it makes a nice, uh, that's why it makes a nice spray of water. Um, and then having him chase the water and bite it. He loves doing that. So he gets to do, uh, fun, fun, uh, chasing games, killing games with, this is super gross, but like toys like this and we play together and he gets to practice his skills at killing but without kill, actually killing real animals. Um, so another thing that I thought, oh my goodness, what if I had someone with a really tiny chihuahua visit and he thinks it's a squirrel? Like the speed at which he killed the squirrel was shocking. I was like, whoa, I have a stone cold murderer in my house. This is slightly weird for me. And I had thought to myself, I'll never get a terrier again after Tug, but I love them. I think they're amazing. They're so smart and so talented. So um, 
that's the story. I hope you found it interesting and see you later.